Well, let's get a little bit more national reaction, shall we, to the news of Seattle Kraken becoming the NHL's 32nd franchise. With that particular name, Ray Ferraro is joining us now on the line, former NHLer and TSN NHL analyst. Ray, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Exciting day for you guys, huh? Pretty much, pretty much. I'm sure you've been as keen as anyone to see what this name would be. And finally, it is out there. Uh, your initial thoughts? I uh, love it. Uh, love that it's different. Love that um, it's creative. Love the colors. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm a little biased here. My, my wife is Cami Granado, and she scouts with, um, with the franchise. And um, I don't think they've honestly had a misstep since the franchise was, was announced, uh, since they started to go forward with the way they've hired people, with the diverse nature that they've uh, brought into their organization, with the way that they've gone to the Climate Pledge Arena, to the naming of the team. And I know they would have liked to have gotten it out earlier, and sure, world events have kind of prevented that. But, man, it's been home run after home run. I, I think this is awesome. And then the, the, the task, the small task now, of course, is to keep that momentum up for puck drop in, in 2021. What do you think? I know it's obviously a long way away and we've got return to play and more hockey before that to come. What do you think um, Seattle Kraken are going to be getting themselves in for in the Pacific Division? Well, um, they're in a division that's in a little bit of transition. Um, you know, the California teams uh, were all so good for so long. And they got older, and now they're trying to rebuild and change their teams. Of course, Vegas came in, uh, you know, three years ago. Vancouver started to put together a, a good young team, which is going to be a fabulous rivalry, um, you know, when Seattle and Vancouver get going and get to play head-to-head. Uh, -head. But there's one thing that, you know, maybe the casual fan won't quite notice yet, but um, with the return to play and the collective bargaining agreement, the salary cap is flat. There's $81 million of salary cap money to be spent over the next uh, three to five years. Well, Seattle's got no dollars spent. There's going to be teams that are not going to be able to afford incredible players that are still in the primes of their career. I think Ron Francis and Ricky Olchek and company are going to get a pool of players to look at that maybe they wouldn't have had even just eight months ago. So I think Seattle will be a really competitive team very quickly. Of course, Vegas has raised the bar to a crazy height, but I think Seattle will be better than most people think they might be. How attractive a destination do you think Seattle will be for NHLers, for free agents maybe, that have been impacted by the financial implications of coronavirus? Or maybe even without those implications, how attractive do you think Seattle is as a landing stop? Well, Seattle's a beautiful city. Those of us that live out west know it. Um, those that haven't been there will find out about it very quickly. I think... I think Seattle will be um, uh, one of the more sought after destinations. If, if you think about different tiers of players, um, a guy will become a free agent and he might look at the very best teams because he wants to win a Stanley Cup. And so that's kind of like four or five or six teams. Then there's a whole bunch of teams in the middle where guys are jockeying for position for the best deal financially, but also the best deal that, um, that might allow them to play. And then there's this, this new shining team that nobody knows anything about except it's in a beautiful city. They, their organization seems to be forward thinking and creative and they have a clean roster. I think Seattle has an opportunity free agency wise. If that's how they choose to fill a lot of the spots on the team, I think they have a chance to, to field a, a really good group because players will want to go to Seattle. There are some cities that are a challenge for, you know, to attract free agents. Seattle's not going to have that problem. Not at all. And Seattle will be a salary cap team too. So that's another thing maybe going in its, in its favor. I'm no expert on how, and Ricky Olchek is, on how you're going to break up that roster. But certainly that and the no state income tax will be an attractive proposition, don't you think? Yeah, yeah very much so. I mean, now you can talk to Ricky about the roster and he'll, you know, he'll drill you in 47 different ways about how you can get this player for that price or how you spend an X number of dollars on your defense or on your goaltending or your forwards. And that's the challenge of building this team. And nobody's going to do it the same way. You can ask 10 different people and they'd all go about it a different way. But in Carolina, where Ricky and Ron Francis, of course, came from, they were, they were under the stress of really having to watch every dollar on their budget. 
and they found a way to maximize player on dollar. And so I, I think you're going to have a, a creative group that's able to build the team maybe differently than other people will with a little old thought, a little new thought, some analytics, some eye test. I, it, it really strikes me as a, as a group that can expand their view that other teams can't. Because remember, other teams are already locked into contracts of players that maybe can't per perform to the dollar that they're at. Seattle has none of those contracts. And that is really one of the great benefits of starting anew, is that you can build your culture, you can build your roster the way you want it. And, and you guys are lucky in Seattle. You know, I've known Ron Francis for 35 years. Um, he's an extremely smart guy. He's always been uh, somebody that has been able to see the, the biggest picture. And, uh, and Ricky is a sharp guy. This is, again, it's a grand slam so far for Seattle. And I love what they did today. I just, I, I think the colors are great. The logo is great. I can't wait to see it on the ice. Fantastic. Final question for you, Ray. Return to play just over a week's time. For the new NHL fans, maybe who've seen this release today, the releasing of the Kraken, they're getting interested in hockey. What should they be looking out for in this 2014 tournament? Well, I, I would say the unpredictability of it because everybody's been off for so long, four and a half months. What was a really great team should probably still be a really great team, but they might not be. It's four and a half months. I mean, will players be able to stay healthy both in hockey injury or with COVID? I mean, it's unpredictable, and I think it will feel like a sprint early, and then it'll settle into the grind of what are the, as usual, the, one of the toughest trophies ever to win, and that's the Stanley Cup. Yep, there will be a Stanley Cup at the end of uh, that Tournament, which will be fantastic to see after the, the pause, as we've all been uh, obviously through right now. Ray Ferraro, it's great to get your thoughts. Thanks very much indeed for your time. All the best, you bet. Congratulations on a great day today. Thank you. Ray Ferraro, TSN analyst, former NHLer, joining us live here.